Here, let's talk about the components of GDP. Um, we're going to start with the two approaches to compute GDP. And the idea comes from a very simple thing we learned in Chapter 2. It's called Circular Flow Model or Circular Flow Diagram. Um, a very important thing we learned from there is one person's expenditure is another's income. For example, if I spend one dollar purchasing a bottle of water from Mary, who is the owner of the grocery store, then in this transaction, it's going to be my expenditure because I spend that one dollar, right? And it will be Mary's income, okay? So here, what we're saying is one person's expenditure always equals another's income. If we would like to figure out how much we produced, we could have two ways. The first one is to focus upon everybody's expenditure. The second approach is to focus upon everybody's income. Remember, you don't have to do both. If you do both, you double count. Okay? You double count the goods and services we produced. You only need to do one of the two. Now, if you focus on the income, it's what we call the income approach. It looks at where do the household's income go. Okay? Now, generally speaking, um, our income will be spent or part of our income will be spent on consumption, uh, food, clothing, utility we pay, right, housing. And uh, if we don't spend all of our income, we're going to save. So that's our savings. Okay? We also need to pay taxes to our government. Correct? And um, for some of us, we would also receive transfer payments. Okay? Transfer payments means you are not really, uh, as a recipient, you're not really providing any service or producing any, any goods to the government, but you are receiving uh, the benefit from the government. So the examples could be the social security benefit or the unemployment benefit. Okay. Why we want to um, put a minus sign in front of the transfer payment? Because these payments could be um, some uh, members of our society's income, right? But they don't produce anything. So here, remember, on the left-hand side of the equation, we're trying to figure out the output. So we need to take these parts of the income off to be able to get our output okay they're not producing but they receive the income so they should these part of the income should not be counted okay when we look at when we uh, are trying to figure out our output now here we use um, um the letters okay for each one so y stands for gdp or national income or output and um, C stands for consumption, S, savings, and T means net taxes. Okay. Um, the second approach is uh, expenditure approach, which focuses um, on where all firms' products go. Okay. Now, if you produced um, something, it could be purchased by a consumer. So that would be the consumption or part of the consumption. If it's purchased by government, then it will be the government purchases. Okay, And um, we also have the investment in net exports. On the very next slide, I will explain each of them, what they mean, what they cover. Okay, So here, again, Y equals C plus G, which is government purchases. Sometimes we call it government spending okay, or government expenditure. They are interchangeable. Okay? I stands for investment. 
and x means net exports okay or exports minus import okay now these two are called national income account identity identity means they are um, always equal okay the left hand side and the right hand side they are equal by definition okay now um what are the components of gdp okay? especially with the expenditure approach because that one uh, is used more often than the income approach now the first one consumption whatever households purchase okay as we just said you know the tv uh, the xbox um, the kitchen appliances computer desks and chairs all of these uh, purchased by your household uh, your family would be consumption uh, if it's purchased by government it could be any level of the government from the federal all the way to local okay um, it will be counted as uh, government purchases investment would be the most challenging one among these uh, components okay there are three sub categories under investment the first one is a business fixed investment uh, if you remember in the previous chapter we talk about capital goods okay or capital versus financial capital capital means man-made means of production um, it includes tools equipment machinery here when we say business fixed investment it's the same thing for example, Birmingham Southern purchases an overhead projector or a laptop for its faculty member. These would be the business fixed investment. Okay? Once again, we're not talking about the financial investment. We're not saying that Birmingham Southern um, invest on stocks or bonds. These are not investment because remember, we when we define output measure or gdp we said there's no financial assets okay we try to focus on the real goods and services uh, the second category is a residential investment in other words if you purchased uh, a, a new home uh, which is built this year or apartment a condo and they will be counted as part of the residential investment here i want to ask you why you know the, the purchase of the new house is not going to be part of the consumption instead we put it under residential investment what you could do is to think about the purchase of a car for example okay, when we purchase a car we put it under a consumption we believe that's our consumption but why the purchase of a house is going to be an investment i think this question will give you a very good chance to tell the fundamental difference between consumption and the investment okay again during our virtual meeting we could talk about this now the third sap category under investment is called inventory investment in other words um, if um, you know a, a firm produces uh, a lot more than what the market leads or demands then they put in the warehouse and these um, products are going to be counted as an inventory investment once again i would also leave these for you guys to think about why we take the inventory as a, a type of investment you know our common sense always says that inventory means you pr you produce too much right you miscalculated the market demand um, as a producer you you produce too much so that you have to put them in the warehouse how could that be an investment okay think about it um, in the real world businesses especially these uh, 
giant manufacturers are actually using the inventory in a very active way. Okay. In other words, it's not really because they miscalculate the market demand and, and overproduced. They produce, overproduce intentionally. Again, think about why. Okay. Uh, the fourth component is net exports. So it's exports minus import. Okay. Um, export means what we produced for the rest of the world. Okay, so here we would like to add them to our output um, simply because it's not part of our expenditure. Remember, they are pur purchased uh, by foreign uh, customers, right? So it's not our expenditure, but it is our output. So we would like to add it to um, the right hand side of that equation. Uh, the expenditure um, approach equation and we minus imports because imports are part of excuse me a part of our expenditure but it's not what we produced for example if we purchase a french wine or a german beer right it is our expenditure but it's not what we produced so when we calculate our output we have to take it off our expenditure to be to be able to get our output okay now here i would like to leave um, another question for you guys to think about uh, which component of the gdp a gmc pickup truck belongs to okay which component of gdp a gmc pickup truck belongs to let's talk about this during our virtual meeting okay? now here um we give you uh, the real, real world numbers for each component of the u.s economy so that you would have a quick sense of how big they are in gdp okay now the first column is the total the second column is per person okay here let's focus on the first column so consumption um here is uh, approximately 11.5 trillion dollars okay i believe this is uh, um uh, the data a few years ago okay and uh, so if you use that uh, consumption number divided by the gdp which is 16.8 uh, trillion dollars you would find that a consumption itself accounts for about 68 percent of our gdp it's a single largest uh, component okay it accounts more than two-thirds of our output investment uh, approximately 16 percent government purchases 19 percent and net exports minus three percent you might be interested in why here we see a minus number okay that's because our imports exceeded our exports so we produced um, less to the rest of the world than what we purchased from them okay all right so here we finished our discussion about the components of gdp and uh, in the next video we're going to continue talking about um, the difference between nominal and real gdp